Hi everyone, and we are going to start off a tutorial where we are going to just backtrack over lots of things that I've taught you separately over the years, and we're going to roll it all together as a big reminder. And if you're just starting out, this will be a really good foundation one to follow along before you get going on any portrait. So this portrait is going to be of one of my own dogs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a little talk about the reference photo, then how we're going to edit the reference photo, then how we will be able to pull the colours out of the photo, play around with backgrounds options and also we're going to turn it into a line drawing. So it's basically everything, oh I might even add in there sort of how we size it to print as well. Um, but I'll break it down into all of those little sections and then we'll tie them all together. And hopefully, like I say, then you'll be able to go off and do any piece you want. It doesn't have to be a dog or even a cat. It could be any subject at all. Then you'll know what you're looking for with your reference and what to do with it to get going and to get it over onto your paper or your support. So on my folder here, on my computer, all I've done literally is just I've opened up my file called Abby. And Abby here is the original reference photo here. So let me just open that one up and we'll take a look. So we're just looking at that in the picture viewer there on my computer. Okay, so I've opened Abby up. This is the original reference photo. And um, believe it or not, it was only taken on a, a camera phone, uh, not taken on, you know, a professional camera or anything. It was just, it caught a brilliant moment, a beautiful light, a uh, beautiful pose, Probably her being a bit naughty, actually. She'd just obviously just done something wrong and she was refusing to look at me. So she, you see, just say the colours and everything that are shining through. Lovely, lovely profile on there with just the one eye, just looking off into the distance. You could create anything from this. She could be looking up at something, a butterfly, the moon, anything you wanted her to be. You could put her in amongst any kind of background scene as well. But we're going to keep it, keep it quite simple because we want the focus to be on Abby herself. So I'm going to open her up first of all. And I'm going to show you a little bit about sort of just making some adjustments to her. Um, maybe just to pull, push and pull the contrast and the colours and the highlights just to help. These are all going to be tools to help your eyes and your brain later on. So the first thing we're going to do, we've opened up, this is a photo editor called Be Funky. You can use any... PicMonkey, there's lots of different ones out there. GIMP is free. If you've got Photoshop, absolutely fine. So this can be used as a free app. I always recommend opening the full, downloading the full program or using it on a computer. I'm using it on a laptop here. Um, I do pay something like 20 something dollars a year because I've got access to the full program so any of the effects and etc that they add on um i mean if you break that down it's a couple of dollars a month um it's well worth it to have access and the ease of what this does for you okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the computer so open and i'm going to open up that photo it's taking me straight to the abbey folder but if it doesn't just go to the folder where your reference photo is and this is the original reference that we had open just now. So I'm going to open this up. And then we're just going to have a quick look at it and see if we just want to make some tweaks. Now, I'm quite happy with Abby, so I'll just show you a couple of things that you can do. And I probably will undo them. So I've just hit the beautify button over here on the left hand side. And you can make some adjustments. See there, it's injecting more light into it. So if you need to inject some more light into it, you can use the beautify button. And what that does is it pumps up the light and it also pulls up the colour a little bit as well. I'm not going to press apply. I'm just going to click cancel on that. What I might do is just come in. So you can add, again, click the vibrance and then you can up the vibrance. So if you've got um, a more colourful animal, again, you can pull up some of the vibrance there. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference on Abby. Um... Beautify. Fill light. So again, if you've got quite a dark picture, hit the fill light. And again, that is another way 
that in some more light if you've got a very dark picture. Again, I don't need it for this. What I might do is I might just tweak the um, the levels of the values a little bit. So I'm going to take the brightness down a tiny bit and that'll darken her up a little bit. Pull the contrast up a tiny bit, not much. Yep. And then I'll lift the highlights a little bit as well. And what that's done, that's just exaggerated some of those lights and darks a little bit more for me. Just created a little bit more drama. Now this time, rather than clicking cancel, I'm going to apply. I've hit the apply. Um, other things you can do, again, we might come back to those later on. We can take take the background away. So if you wanted to lift the background away, again, you can just lift... Um, in fact, let's use the other way, where you can lift the background away by doing cut out. And what you've got there is an option there to remove the background. So you can actually tell it, it's very clever, remove the background, and it'll seek out the most obvious subject. It'll lose the whiskers, etc., because that's not part of the main block that it's looking at. But if you had a really fussy background there that was really affecting how you're seeing the colours, this is a really good way of getting rid of that background. Now, let's have a look. Let me just see if I can do it this way. Let's change the background colour to white. So I've removed the background and we've made it white. So what I might do is I'll stick with this and then we'll use this for pulling our colours out for our colour picker, which is what we'll do next in a different programme. Um, just because it's easier to do. Um, so there we go. So that was a really simple. I'll just show you how to do that again. So you go into the cutout, hit the remove background. And then what I did, the, the background initially was transparent, which means then if you wanted to lay it over a different color background, you can. Um, I can make the background gray. Look at the difference it all makes to the actual dog. Black looks beautiful on the black. Um, I'm probably going to create her on anthracite, which is kind of, mm, let's have a look, around here, which is quite nice. Or I might even do her on blue. Um, we'll see. Now that's more like it there. That. And I think that looks beautiful. But for the colour picking, we're going to pull her out onto white and then we've got a much better idea of the true colours that are showing. So let's apply that. We'll trim the transparency. No, we won't. And we'll just click apply. And there we go. So now we've got a lovely clean image that's just been bumped up a little bit with the contrast and the colour. You can tweak yours as much as you want. There's loads of little tools over here um, for sharpening up detail, making the clarity a little bit more, fiddling around with the lights, direction of the light. Have a real play through all of these. Um, and it's just a fab, simple, little, clever program to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this to my computer into that Abbey folder. And then we we're going to open her up and we'll open her up into a different program and start to pull some of those colours out. OK, so we're back into our folder now. You can see these are the images I've played around with previously here. Um, so here's the one that we've just saved. Abby, the reference photo with the white background. So I'm going to right click on that one now and it will give you an option. Open with. So I'm going to open it with paint. Um, any program that's got a color picking tool um, and a pen marker dragging tool will be perfect for this. You can do it without dragging, but I just think when I'm doing a demo like this, it's good for you to see where the color was dragged from. OK, so hit that and it's opened her up and she is huge. So I'm just going to make her a little bit smaller there. OK, so we have dropped her size down now, just so she's all visible. Now, normally I would drop this onto like a template and do the drags out from the template. But we're just going to keep this one quite simple. So rather than overcomplicating things, all I'm going to do is grab that corner, drag it outwards, and then that gives us a bigger white area. 
and then we'll come up to the selection tool here. We'll select the whole actually left click down, drag, get a box around her like that. That's selected there. Cut her and then we are going to paste her down but here we can come in. So while she's got a little cursor, click left, hold it down and we'll be able to drag her more central. So now she's right in the middle of our picture so we can work our way around and drag the colours out and then release and then just bring that cursor outside of this little dotted area, click and she is now fixed down within that area. So it gives us a nice little area to work on to drag our colours out to. So the important thing here is this little colour picking tool up here and this basically we can go in on any area, grab a colour and drag it out. First of all I want to make sure that I've got my brush, go to the size and we'll go to the bigger size. In fact let me just see if I can pull out an even bigger one. I want to make sure I've got the biggest size. There we go. That will give us a nice size to drag and let's go to the biggest one. The nice size to drag out from. So what we want to do now, I'll switch over to using my pen. You want to click on the colour picker. We'll do it on the eye first because it's nice and obvious. Then you click on the eye and then from there keep your pen, your selection tool, your mouse down and drag upwards. Now the only thing with this is it's not quite as bright as using the other brush. So maybe I will use the other brush. Let's just try that. I'll undo that again. Come into the brush. Let's go back to I know this one is. Will this give me a thick I just want a nice thick one. So let's try that again. No, see that's quite transparent again, so we don't want that one either. We'll go for the main brush, it'll just be a thinner line. Here we go. So that's the thickest line that we can do. So, selection tool. Let's come in here. Grab the eye. Okay. And then just colour that in. Now, what you could do here, if I undo that just to make it a little bit clearer, if I do one circle like this, as long as the lines meet up at the top, hit the fill button, and that'll fill that spot. So that will make it, that's probably your best option. So I've just shown you a few different little ways and the tools within the paint. This will give you a much more precise, you won't be able to see the big drag out line, but that will pinpoint it and you can follow it back. It'll give you the bigger, more opaque, truer um, colour match when you drag out. So we'll carry on repeating that, we'll come back, hit the brush, then hit the tools, your colour picker. So let's come in. Obviously this is our darkest area. So we'll drag that out, draw a little circle and then we'll we'll fill that and it'll fill it with the same colour. Back, always remember to hit the brush, then hit the selection tool, the picking tool. So there's some lovely pinks in and around here, pinky greys I can see. So let's come in here again. If you need to make it a little bit bigger, you can. Then hit your little paint tin and that will fill that spot in. Brush, picker, where else do we want to go? Some lovely greys, let's drag some of these greys out, make a circle. As long as you make those lines meet up, otherwise it will fill the whole back shape in. Which I can show you, let's, let's show you that. If you don't, what happens if you don't make a complete circle? Right, some lovely dark cold greys in here. So this one, look, I'm not going to make the line meet up. So now if I hit that, it will fill the whole background <laughs> because I didn't make the lines meet up. So that is why you need to make your line meet up. So let me just go back to my brush, finish that little line off, and now I can fill it. I hope that makes sense. So brush, selection. And um, we'll just work our way round. Oh, we'll work our way round. I think there I hit some of the background. So let me just undo that. Pick. Drag. 
It's a very subtle little grey in there. Paint can fill, but once you fill it, you can see the difference between that on the white. If you did this on a darker background, it'd be much harder for your eyes to see. You can train your eyes over time. I don't tend to use this myself, but it's not to say that it's not a good reminder if your eyes are tired um, or you're struggling to see the differentiation between all of the colours, then please do use this as a tool. Whoops, I haven't made it meet up quite there. Okay, brush selection. Try go. And some of these colours will repeat themselves as you work your way around, but that's fine. Brush selection. Try go. Make it meet. Painting brush selection. Now some lovely colours down through here as well, really pinky greys. They look pinker in the fur than when you drag them out because that just looks like a soft warm grey there now. So let's go in and see what else we can pick up. Now there, there's that lovely pinky nougari grey with a little hint of kaput mortem in there I would say. Let's fill it, lovely. So now you can start to see some of the different colours. That's like a nice brownish tone through there as well. You can carry on doing this, you can pull out as many as you like, you can come back to it if you're really struggling, of like oh, I can't see what is going on there. Just come back to it. Um, and that's the good thing, you can always come back. Look at the brown, that brownish tone through there then. Um, let's go up to the grey, let's grab that obvious grey there. Fill that one. Brush picker. It's so quick and so easy. Um, lovely Payne's grey, bluey grey there. Let's fill that one. Brush picker. Um, let's have a look through here. Again, that lovely bluey grey. But sometimes I say, oops, see, I didn't quite hit the can. There we go. Get the brush and the picker. What else do we want? I think that's most of what we want to see. There's a lovely warmish grey through there. So you can, you, so you can use the template that I've shown you before if you really want to. Um, this just means that you can be a little bit more precise and get in a little bit closer and probably, you know, see more um, colours closer to the actual dog. What else do we want? I'm going to come into the eye. There's a tiny little bit in here that I want to pull out. It's quite a bluey grey just in reflection of the sky in her eyes there, a little bit. Anything else? But like I say, just keep going. If you want to, see, if you see more, um, Oopsie brush, there we go. It's coming around here. Again, I think that's just a repetition of the cut one a colour that's in another area. It's very similar to this one over here and this one down here. So the colours repeat themselves all around. Um, if there's anything you look in on and go, I'm not sure about that, so let's come into that grey. What does it look like when we drag it out on a white background? Now this is going to change if I use um, anything other than white as well as my my support. And I'm looking at using dark grey, so I'm going to have to adjust my colours. But what I want to do is adjust them to kind of suit these colours that I'm dragging out now. Okay, so that's looking at our reference, tweaking our reference and now dragging our colours out. So what, what we'll do now is we'll go back to the original image. Whoops, I've just done almost filled her in then. Um, go back to our original image and we will then turn that one into a line drawing. So we're back in our folder here with um, Abby. So we've got there's another thing I want to show you actually. 
this one here which is the blurred image and again we did that one in Be Funky so we've got the original Abby here reference here she is on the white background and here she is where we've just pulled out all of those colours so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the um, original Abby to do the line drawing because we've lost a few of the whiskers and bits um, so just to make sure we've got the whole image we're going to open up the reference so once again right click on her go to that open with down here and I'm going to open her up with GNU which is the image manipulation program okay so open that one up and I can give you a link to because you need this 2.8 because they've changed it over the years since this version so I have got a link for you to be able to go and get the this version if not you'll just have to if you get the newer version you'll just have to find your way to find the um, commands that we use to create the line art and there we go so it might ask you something like this the image is an embedded color profile convert it to RGB so we will we'll say convert it's fine okay so I just want to make sure you can see everything okay shouldn't I be able to see everything there this is a whistle stop <laughs> um, introduction to getting your reference ready so what we want to do here is we're going to convert her into a digital line art you can create your own line art you can use the reference photo if you like this is just a digital tool to again help you on your way so you want to come up here to filters click on filters and then we want it to detect the edges so you come down to edge detect and then click on this different of Gaussian different or difference of Gaussian Okay, which is edge detection and if I drag what it comes up this will be the settings it comes up as you want to make sure these two boxes are ticked um, I'll show you what happens if you don't have them ticked and it'll come up usually as three and one so if I drag this across here so her eye is going to be down from here so there's her eye which is a good starting point to go in at so what you want to do is come into this radius one you want to change that you can you can play around go up to it's like 30 40 I tend to come in about 75 nowadays okay so 75 and you can see the difference that that made now sometimes I will put this down to zero but sometimes I'll try it at two hmm. I'm probably going to come back in at one I liked one zero and two both seem to lose something for me this kind of gave me enough detail so I'll come back over let's have a look at the nose area yeah that's looking good I've got you can see this form here and we'll take out the color in a second as well it will all make sense by the finish basically what you're doing is simplifying it down so click OK So once you're happy, come down here and click OK. And you'll just see this edge detect. Just, just be patient. You'll see this doing its thing, working its magic along the bottom there. So just let it finish what it's doing. And then the whole picture will turn into that little, like, it will end up like that little thumbnail that we were zooming around on um, just now when we were setting up the parameters. And telling it what to convert so there we go so it's a little bit faint so what we want to do then if we'll come up to colors and first of all desaturate so you want to take out any color that's in there this will make it black and white so just click you want it on lightness and click OK okay come back up to colors again and this is the one that always looks a little bit scary come into brightness and contrast let me drag that over so you can see what I'm doing okay so brightness take it down to minus 100 don't panic okay contrast bring it up to 90 and then click OK OK 
Come back into colors again if you feel you need to and you can go into levels. And this is just if you need to adjust and add in any more detail. If you think you need a little bit more, see this is making it taking it fainter again. This is just strengthening up those darks. So I try and get it somewhere in the middle. I don't want too much in there. And like I say, what we'll do is we'll probably just come in and use these little dark shapes. Um, but it's simplified it down. It's taken away some of the fluffiness of the fur texture. So it's less distracting for us. It just simplifies it. And there you have your digital image. Very important is when you go up here now, you don't want to overwrite the original reference. You don't, if you save it, you're saving it into the program. What you want to do is export it out of the program. So click export as, we'll save it into that Abbey folder there. Um, and we'll call this Abbey Line Art. So we'll just change the name. And you can convert it here as well. If you want to make it a PDF, you can. I tend to work with JPEGs or PNGs, so I'll keep mine as a JPEG. And click export, and it will usually ask you what quality. Let's have a look. There we go. It's quality at 94%. That's fine. And we'll export. And there it is. It's dropped now into our Abbey folder. There's the line art just loading up there. So that's the one we can print out um, to size. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a second as well. And that's really... Oh, background. So I'll open this one up for you to see. So I am thinking I'd quite like to work with her on the suede matte board. So what I've done is here, I've downloaded, I could take a photo, I could get my own suede matte, which I probably will, and it'll give me a much truer finish. In fact, I will do that. I'll take a photo of the surface that I'm thinking of working her on. I was thinking of dark pastel matte, um, anthracite pastel matte earlier on. But now I'm also looking thinking, oh, do you know what? I think she'd look beautiful, done just like my Aura Cat, and do it on the smoke crescent suede board in smoke hue colour. Um, so I'll take a photo of that, and then I'll show you again. Exactly like we did the cutout with the white background, we'll cut her out with a transparent background, and I'll show you then how to layer her onto this background and then you're getting the whole lot in this one video. Okay so now I'm back in the Be Funky app or program and what I've done is I took a photo of um, my suede map board. So this was an image here that I took off the internet. This one here is a photo because obviously you'll see my hand in it. This is my suede map board so this is more true of the area that I will be using for Abbey. So I'm going to just spin it first of all. Um, so we've got the more detail at the top. So let's just spin it there. I think. No, we won't actually. Let's undo that. We'll just crop it. Let's cancel that. So let's crop. So what I want to do is crop my hand out basically. Um, let's crop it down a little bit and apply. Now, did we save Abby as a layer? I'm noticing, no, we didn't save her as a layer. There's lots of other images here. Oh, I have. So, what we'll do though is I will show you again. I have got her here as a layer. So this is what we are looking to do. We're looking to turn her, like we did with that the white background earlier on, we want to do it again, but pop her in with a transparent background like I showed you. So we'll repeat it and then we can drop her in over the top. So let's just delete her. So we want to bring in now, we're going to use the image manager. So what we want to do is remember that image that we tweaked the contrast and the colour on. We're going to go and get that one. So it's this one here, Abby with the white background. So that's the one where we've tweaked the colours. So let's grab that. Now we're going to left click on her and add her as a layer. Now, whilst this dotted line is rounded, that means that that image is selected. So we're going to come in 
and use the cutout like we did originally we'll use the cutout and then we'll hit that remove background but this time we'll leave the background color this drop with a line through it means transparent so we're going to remove the background and this will give us the transparent option okay so if you wanted to save that we're going to apply it if you wanted to save that as a separate layer, you just export it as a layer and then the original one with the white background will stay here in front of you and this one with the transparent layer will go off into that little media library of images over to one side. We're not too fussed about that, so we're just going to hit apply and there it is. There she is as simple as that, transparent background. And now what we can do is literally just enlarge her and we can see what she's going to look like on. I'm going to give her more room. I'll give her some more space on the actual um, suede mat when I come to do her. Probably position her off to that one side. In fact, what we could do is let's see what she looks like on um, a wider sheet. So let's rotate the background. Oh, she looks quite nice there, actually. Let's bring her in a little bit. This is just a good way of figuring out what layout you want. Oh, I quite like her on there. It's very similar to Aura Cat. You could put her quite central, a little bit off to one side, and that looks quite nice. And then if you wanted to bring in something else or drop another, you could drop another thing. I could drop Max in here as well. If I can get Max to pose, you know, the other time on my other dogs to look exactly the same direction. I could drop him in there as well. And we could drop her on top of Max's picture. Okay, and I've shown that before on other videos. But I quite like that. And that just gives us an idea of what she is going to look like on this support. So, yeah, I like that. So now I'm going to fix her into place. Yeah, I know that when I come to then draw her, I'm going to add in a little bit more fur down here. We could crop her a little bit more and just drop that bit out if you wanted to. Entirely up to you. I quite like her with a little bit more though. A little bit of the chest fur. Can make her a little bit bigger if we want to. I like that. So what I'm going to do is come down here. We see these little buttons here. You've got layers and groups, alignment. This one here is flatten. So now if I click that, she is now fixed. I can't move her. I can't grab her. She is fixed to the background fixed into place I can if I want crop the whole image so I'll just come in once more we'll just crop that once more that's quite nice and then what I could do just to soften that edge as well if I go to touch up um, let's clone what I might do is just clone that area just down the edge there. I'll just soften that edge. Look at that. It's not exact, but you know, it's just given us a little idea of what it'll look like around there. Click apply. And I'm quite happy with that little mock up of uh, Abby. So we are all ready now for the printer. Oh, no. First of all, we'll go up and we'll save it to the computer. So let's just rename her um, Abby Edited because it's an edited image on the suede so that's just telling me that I've edited it and I've placed her onto the suede board and we will save her back into that folder okay so finally we are back in our um, Abbey folder so next what we want to do is we want to print off our line art so you can size your line art or you can just literally print it to um, and you can print off your reference as well to the same size. So I'm just going to show you how you can size your art or you can just print it off to um, fill the paper. So if you want an A4 size or an A3 size, you can just print it to um, fill that sheet of paper the best possible way. So I'm going to right click on her again. And we'll go back and we'll open her up in GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. So I'll bring her up here so you can see what I'm doing. So we'll go to Image. 
You'll see here there's something called print size. So let's have a look what she's printing out at. I'm going to change it to millimetres, which is no good to me whatsoever. So we change it to inches and it's actually 31 by 40 inches, which is quite big. Um, let's change it to centimetres. It's even bigger. So let's say we want to print her and we want to keep her relatively small. We don't want to do a huge. Let's do her. Let's imagine that that layout that we had was putting her on the suede mat in a, a landscape, a horizontal picture. So we want her to, and that's going to be 12 by 16 inch. So we want her to fill about half that space. So width wise, let's change this to eight inch and then it should hopefully, eight by 10 is what she's coming in at. So let's make her a little bit, I want her about 12 inches. No, do I want a 12? No, I don't quite want a 12 inches tall. So that's actually quite good, about 10 and a half. Let's make it up to 10 and a half inches. Just a tiny little tweak, 10.5. And that's what size we're going to print her off at, and that's what we're going to draw at. So just remember that the height you've put in at 10.5 and 8.1, just keep a, a remember of those measurements. Okay. And then we'll go to OK. So now we've resized that, and when we can go to print. So now we've sized it. And we're going to actually print. Now you can go into page setup and fiddle around and get rid of your borders, etc. If you want to, or just well, let's go into print. I'll pull this over so you can see it. So I've got more than one printer, but we're going to use this one here, the Epson seven five one five. So you want to come into your preferences. Um, yep, it's going to print it out onto A four paper, portrait which is what I want, and the line drawing, I'm just going to print, print it out onto plain papers, but a quality print. Change it to grayscale if you want, because it's in grayscale anyway, but just always make sure you click on the more options to make sure that the output paper is coming in. So this image is sized A4, and my output paper is going to print the same as document size. Okay, if you wanted to reduce or enlarge the picture, it's here. And all you do is come back, click OK, apply, and then hit print, and that will print your image off. And then you can do exactly the same. I'll just drop that one down. You can come in exactly the same. So Abbey on the white background, or Abbey reference, whichever one you want to use. I'll go, I'd go for this one here because we've tweaked this one. Um, and then you can refer to the other one if you want. So open with if I can do it. Open with. <laughs> so we're opening it up again. Yep, we'll convert that. Let's drag her over so you can see. Into the image, into the print size, and let's change that. Remember it was 10.5 and we want to, oopsie, we didn't change it to inches, did we? 10.5 why is it not doing this? Reset. There we go. Inches. 10.5. 8.133. Click OK. And into file. And then we'll export that as oh we're not going to export it you can if you wanted to save it um export it you can overwrite abby if you wanted to but that will change the size of the abby reference photo which you don't really want to do so if you wanted to save it export it as again but change the name so you can put it as um resized or print size you can so then you know then in the title what you've done with that image so you could save her so we could export her But then what we'll do is come in and then you can do exactly the same. Print. Hit your preferences button. Make sure your document is the same size. Let's have a look. Yeah, all A4, we're printing on. Portrait. And this one I would print onto my 
Epson Glossy or Epson Photo Gloss and then it will make it high quality and we're going to do that one in colour because we want that one in full colour. Always try and click print preview down here as well. Um, there's loads of things in here I've shown before but you can you know print, print it to poster size, change the sizes, lots of things. Um, but again click OK, click apply and then click print and then that one will print off under those commands that you've given it. So that should be everything that you need to get you going from taking your reference, giving it a little twiddle in the editor, um, turn it into a line drawing, seeing and pulling out those colours, cutting her out onto a, you know, a plain background, dropping her in over uh, any type of background, your photograph, your pastel mat, if you've got like a a background idea with some, you know, like a landscape or something, you could drop her in on top of that. Add in another cat or a dog or a horse, or whatever, you know what I mean? Or even yourself, you, you can add in other subjects there as well. Um, and then how to print them off. And that should be everything that you need to get going on any portrait, any image whatsoever. So I hope that you utilise um, this one. And I'll try and remember to post it a few times as a reminder to prompt you to go and look. Because um, it's questions I get asked all the time. I can't see the colours. I don't know what background to choose. How do I do my line art? Um, there's loads of, like, you know, I've shown you lots of times how to transfer the line art. But this has just rolled everything into one video. Um, and we'll just call it prep. <laughs> all prep for any any piece. We'll call it, call it something like that. Um, and hopefully I'll get rid of that image down there now. Hopefully, um, that will be a real, real aid to help you lot get going um, on any of the pieces, any of the tutorials or any work that you want to put your mind to yourself. OK, so I hope it helps and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.